two analogies that will make you understand what the microphone is. Number one. A microphone is a lens. A lens is an angle or a take on a specific image. Think of a microphone similarly. If a microphone cannot see something, it will probably not pick it up either. In recording, you can have what is called close-up miking and you can have a faraway miking. Close-up miking essentially is like a close-up of a camera that zooms in into a particular detail of the overall scene. It could be the face of a person, it could be the details of a hand. Close-up mic is quite helpful because it allows you to zoom in on a particular sound, handle it exclusively and also isolating it from other surrounding sound. Typical example is we have a drum kit and this drum kit is made up of different parts but we end up microphoning each and every part of the kit separately. Why do we do that? We do that because we want control on every single part of the drum kit so that we can later on, or if we do it live at that very time, create a balance that suits the music style, that suits the music, that suits the genre and so forth. This approach is pretty much the only one you use live because you cannot afford to have a microphone that picks up everything. Number one, you wouldn't have a saying in the mix. And number two, it will create serious feedback problems, which we will not investigate in this course. Close-up micing has the downfall of often being too close to the sound for it to fully develop. Example, if we look at this upright piano, I've taken the cover so that you can see the string below the keys. If we look from far away, we can actually see the entire resonating chamber and all the strings. But as we move closer, as the lens get closest to the string, we start to see less and less of the big picture and start to zoom in on a particular string. Apply that to sound and you will have a similar challenge. The, the, the closer you move towards an instrument, the more specific what you will pick up of that instrument will become. As I explained earlier, that is actually not bad because it, it affords us isolation. The downfall of this approach is that unfortunately, often, the entirety of the tone hasn't developed yet. If you are too close to the, to the skin of a snare, for instance, of a tom, you actually pick up very little of the resonance of the actual shell of the drum. We just saw the piano. The closer we got to the piano, the less we saw of all the strings, which meant we need to use more than one microphone to capture the bigness of the piano. In itself, that's not a problem. It just implies, number one, we will need more microphones. And number two, probably the more pertinent aspect is that we might lose the fullness of the sound of the tone and of the piano. For instance, a pipe organ, to give an example, cannot be recorded next to the pipes because those pipes only produce certain frequencies. If you want a mic pipe organ, you actually have to mic the entire room. Recording a pipe organ with just few microphones close to the player, it will destroy the actual tone of the pipe organ because the pipe organ is a room instrument. Microphones are like lenses. Therefore, the question is, what are you seeing from the point of view of the microphones? The second analogy that I want to mention is the one of the sample taker. You know those little things that take samples of liquid so that can be examined or can be tested? A microphone is similar because even though it is a lens and therefore it has a specific view and a specific angle, a microphone only picks up a piece of air. So a microphone picks up only a specific piece of air. In that way, it's similar to a sample taker. Because that is true, therefore not only the view is important, but other factors come into play. I can have a specific view. But at that view, I can sample a specific piece of air depending on how I place the microphone. For instance, is the microphone straight or like this? Is it like that? Is it face up? The second analogy is quite important. It makes us realize, yes, a microphone is a lens. But it's more than that. It's a piece of air dependent lens. So there is a view, but it is a bit more complex than just taking a picture. You are not just taking a picture like a normal camera. You are actually sampling a piece of air because that piece of air carries the tone that you would like to translate to an electric signal. So microphone placing is quite 
significant and important. And obviously, over time, ones tend to standardize the way you go about things. But I would like to suggest through this course that to really learn to utilize microphone, you experiment much. Take the time to sample different pieces of air so that you may find the tone you're looking for or discover one that would surprise you. Taking these two analogies into account and to conclude this lecture, if a microphone is a lens, if a microphone is a sample taker, then you need to remember that the distance from the source, the height at that particular distance, and the angle at which you place the microphone, all these three variables are significantly important because they will determine which sample of air you'll be taking at that particular site. In a nutshell, where you place the microphone is super important. It is not just, okay, a random, let's put a microphone there and hopefully it will sound great. It is the conclusion of observation and listening. So happy piece of air hunting. And if you can, remember to do the exercise I gave.